Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to the lecture series on bipolar junction transistors. These are also known as BJTs. Basically, BJT is a solid state device for amplifying, controlling and generating electrical signals. This BJT was developed by J. Bardin and Walter Brayton in the year 1947. Further research was carried out by William Shockley and a new device that is MOSFETs was developed in 1951. What are the applications of this BJT? In your mobile phone, there are several hundred millions of transistors. In your laptops, in your computers, there are billions of transistors. Wherever there is electronic gadgets like your radio, then your TV, you'll see there are BJTs inside it. Now, quickly, we will understand the meaning of word bipolar junction transistor. As seen here, the word bipolar is basically the current through the BJT is because of both the carriers that is holes and electrons. The junction stands for inside the BJT there is a PN junction and the transistor stands for transfer of resistance. Let us consider the basic construction of your BJT. Here we can see there is a P region sandwiched between two N region which is called as NPN transistor and there is one more transistor that is N region sandwiched between two P regions. This is known as PNP transistor. In the slide you can clearly see the semantic symbol for the transistor. Here there are three basic terminals of the transistor that is emitter, base and collector. From the circuit symbol if you wanted to identify the emitter terminal always remember it is identified with the help of arrowhead. Whenever there is arrowhead in any terminal of the transistor it is considered as emitter. Now let us consider the basic cross section view of the transistor. From the diagram, you can easily say that the collector terminal of the transistor is doped with the n-type material and similarly the emitter is also doped with the n-type material. Now the basic difference between the construction of transistor is if we are comparing the transistor terminal with respect to area then the base of the transistor is always thin and lightly doped. The emitter of the transistor is considered to be heavily doped than the collector. Now consider the basic current relationship between transistors. Now as per the diagram we can easily say there are three types of current. Emitter current, base current and collector current. As we discussed earlier the base is very thin and lightly doped we can say the value of base current is very low that is in several micro amperes. Similarly, there is emitter current and collector current which is said to be nearly equal. Looking at the diagram, we can say in NPN transistor, the emitter current is the addition of base current and collector current. Similarly, in PNP transistor, the emitter current is the addition of base current and collector current. Now consider the different configurations of the transistor. As we discussed, transistor is having three different terminals, emitter, base and collector. So with respect to this, the transistor can be used in common emitter, common base and common collector configurations. The two basic configurations are considered here that is common emitter and common base and we have considered the current gain of transistor. Now what do you mean by gain? The gain is basically the ratio of output current and input current. In case of common emitter, the IC that is the collector current is considered as output current and 
base current IB is considered as input current. Similarly, in case of common base configurations, IC is the output current and IE is the input current. The relation between these two transistor current gain is very simple and we will prove it in the next video. The alpha is considered as beta upon 1 plus beta and the beta is considered to be 1 minus alpha upon 1 minus alpha. Now quickly consider a simple example of common base configuration. Here the transistor is connected in common base. How to identify it? The base terminal is common between input and output, then we can say it's a common base configuration. As per our definition, the total emitter current is the addition of base current and collector current. So in this example, we are given the base current and collector current and we are supposed to find out the IE, beta and alpha. Now consider the different operating modes of the transistor. The transistor can be used in active region, saturation region and cutoff region. All three characteristics will be observed on the output characteristics of transistor. Now what do you mean by active region? In this region, the transistor works as an amplifier. The basic use of transistor is amplification. So whenever we wanted to use transistor as an amplifier, it should be connected in such a type of biasing where we will get the Q point in active region. Then there are two different modes that is saturation and cutoff. In case of transistor as a switch, we can consider this saturation and cutoff region. Now consider the output characteristics of this transistor. Here quickly we can see the three different regions. This region is basically considered to be active region. This region is considered to be a saturation region. And this region is considered to be a cutoff region. Here the characteristics are plotted that is VCE versus IC. Where VC is considered to be the output voltage and IC is considered to be output current. From the graph, it is observed that the output current is totally dependent on IB, that is the input current. Therefore, the transistor is considered to be a current controlled device. That is, with respect to input current, we can change the output current. So, these are the basic basics of transistors that we can consider whenever we wanted to learn the transistor. So, to conclude, we can say a transistor is a solid state semiconductor device which is used as a amplifier and important thing, it's a current control device. This is Prathamesh Indulkar. Thank you very much for listening.